In this video, you're going to learn the secrets behind how to cut out hair in Photoshop, and there's a lot of techniques that can be used individually. However, we're gonna be combining them all together so you can see how each of these techniques complement one another, but also know when to use each one. So without further ado, let's hop into Photoshop and get started. So here's a list of the techniques that we're going to be covering, and we're going to be starting with the background eraser tool. So you can see I have a high res image and first I'm going to double click the background to make this a layer, duplicate the layer with command or control J and then switch off the original. Next select the background eraser tool located here and from the top you can select a brush type, select this middle option here and for the limits set this to discontiguous. Now the tolerance is the most important setting, we'll start with 10% and see how we go. So just click and drag on the background and you can see it starts to remove it. However this is looking slightly patchy so let's increase the tolerance to 30% and try this again. And as you can see with the higher tolerance Photoshop is much more aggressively removing the background. And to be fair this isn't doing a bad job at all but I can see that shadow behind the subject is going to be a problem. And as I say with this tool the tolerance is the most important setting so it may just take a little bit of tinkering to find the right values and generally I find this tool most suited to tasks that require a quick and dirty cutout however we are working destructively or permanently so we can't undo everything that we've erased which doesn't afford us much flexibility now we could carry on with this but as you can see it's pretty terrible and we're working destructively too which means all of this erasing it's non-reversible now this is still good for anything that's quick and dirty but for a professional finish well there's a better way to do this so we're going to start by adding a solid colour. Rightio, first let's delete that fast but arguably terrible cutout and we'll go back to having our one subject layer. Next from the bottom of the layers panel, add a solid colour adjustment layer. Pick any colour you like, I'd recommend something very bright and vibrant, just like this lovely blue. And then let's move this layer to the bottom and then we can select the subject layer and then go up to select and down to subject. And you can see the marching ants appear and if we add a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel it's done a pretty good job of masking the subject and the hair. And whilst this technique is useful and I do use it frequently I think it's also important to learn the non-AI driven ways as well because this instant select subject won't always work and it's important to be able to deal with any situation. So next we're going to look at channels. Okay let's undo that last step and go back to our subject layer and switch over to the channels panel. From here we need to click through the red, green and blue channels and try and find the channel with the most contrast. And when I say contrast we're looking for the channel with the most black and the most white rather than lots of grey. So for this image we can see that green is the winner and if we drag this onto the new icon we create a duplicate of this channel and we can then press command or control L to bring up the levels panel and we can use this to adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlight in the image to try and create even more contrast. Now the easiest way to do this is to bring the shadows in from the left, bring the highlights in from the right. Not like this though because too much and you'll start to lose a lot of detail. So I would say get your shadows and your highlights in the right position and then just tinker with the midtones. There we go, much better. Next we can hover over the thumbnail for the channel and hold command or control and click to make a selection. Then switch back to the layers panel and add a layer mask. And if it's the wrong way around like this, just press command or control I to invert the mask. Now before we move on, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements, a platform that offers millions of creative assets and unlimited downloads, all complete with a commercial license. And they now offer a free seven day trial so you can try it out for yourself and see what you think. And you can download things like photos, illustrations, icons, fonts, brushes, video, motion graphics, 3D sound, music, and so much more. And all this is just $16.50 a month with an annual your subscription so if all that sounds good check out the link below. Next we're going to use select subject. Now we touched on this before but we're going to be using this slightly differently. So let's go to select subject and now we have a selection of the subject. So with our selection made we can now do some manual masking. So for this select the brush tool, pick a brush with a nice soft feathered edge and using white as the foreground color we can brush away all of that blue from the face and body because she's not a smurf. Smurf, such a weird word. Smurf. Who on earth came up with that? Anyway, I'm now going to just spend a minute removing any unnecessary blue from the subject but I'm staying away from the edges of the hair so we're focusing on the face, the body and the main bulk of the hair. Next we're going to go to select and inverse to invert the selection and we're going to do the same for everything outside the subject, so most notably the background. And whereas before we used select subject to just cut everything out, we're using this mostly for the body so we're staying away from the hair just for now because we'll be coming back to that shortly. Next we're going to open up the select and mask window, so let's go up to select and down to select a mask. Now another cheeky shortcut is to simply click refine hair and there we go that does a pretty good job but depending on your image this may or may not work. 
So let's go over to view. We can change how we're viewing our image, i.e. what the background is behind it when we're selecting and masking. I've set this to on layers so I can see my blue. And then with the refine edge brush tool selected, I'm going to click to sample the color of the hair and then brush around the edges and you can see it's removing the background. Now you can also hold down alt or option and click to do the reverse of this as well, just in case you do refine that edge a little bit too much. And this step requires a little bit of time and care as well because you will get a much better end result. Now let's just whiz through this last little bit of refining. Now, if you do mess up and you'd like to have another go, you can select the brush tool and just brush back in that original image and then try refining it again. And in addition to these tools on the right hand side, we have some sliders as well. And you can see here, I'm dragging the shift edge slider to the left. And what this does is gradually shift the edge of the mask inwards more and more. Very useful for removing fringing around the edges. Right, let's click OK. And using the brush tool, I'm just going to do a little bit more manual masking. Now another use of this technique is to actually remove hairs that you might not like from a creative perspective. But if there's some hairs that caught the light in a certain way and they're standing out or they're just really difficult to mask and they're not giving you a good result, like this lighter one over here, you can just remove them altogether. And you can see me now going around all of the hairs and just refining all of these even further and in some cases removing hairs altogether. Now, one of the downsides of Select Subject is it doesn't always give the cleanest result as far as the edges are concerned. So you can see here, I'm using a very small brush to just go around the outside of the subject and just soften up and tidy up those edges. And there we go, that's looking much better. Next, we're going to move on to another technique for refining edges. So first let's add a new layer and then change the blending mode to darken. Hover the mouse between this layer and your subject layer, hold alt or option and click to add a clipping mask. I'm then going to call this layer something like hair edges and then select the clone stamp tool. Now for this next step, it's definitely worth zooming in and with the clone stamp tool selected, I can hold alt or option and click to sample a part of the hair. But before you do this, make sure you select this option at the top so that you're sampling from the current layer and the layer below. And once you've sampled the hair, we can then brush this in on some of those outer hairs. Now you will need to try and match the color of the hair you're sampling to the area that you're brushing into. For example, some of these that you can see me doing here are a bit too dark, but I will come back and refine these later. So essentially what we're doing is we're using the clone stamp tool to sample the hair from our subject, but we're actually brushing this onto a new layer. And this new layer also uses the darken blending mode to blend things together more seamlessly. And because we added a clipping mask, all of this hair we're clone stamping in is clipped to the subject and isn't going to go everywhere. So if we turn this layer off and back on, you can see the difference. And this looks pretty good, but it definitely needs some more work. So I'm just going to take a moment now to refine this even further. And there we go. Oh my goodness, that is looking considerably better. Right, next let's move on to adding some subject highlights. Now this next step will depend on your subject's environment. Because mine has a blue wall behind her, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on the blue layer and drag this to the top to duplicate. And I'm also going to add a clipping mask to this layer as well. Next, from the drop down, I'm going to set the blending mode to soft light. And then if I select the mask and press Command or Control I to invert it, this will hide everything. And then I can select the brush tool, increase the size, make sure I'm using a soft feathered brush and bring that opacity down nice and low. And then what I can do is start to very subtly brush in a little bit of blue around the edges of my subject. And the reason I'm doing this is to allow for any light or colors from the environment bouncing back onto the subject. For example, when I stand very close to a green screen, I get green bouncing back onto my ginger hair and it's just a bit of a mess. So by introducing some color from your environment onto your subject, it just helps everything hang together a little bit more harmoniously. And if it is a bit too strong, you can also change the blending mode or reduce the opacity on this layer as well. It may be subtle, but all of these little things do make a difference, which neatly brings me on to scene lighting. Now, if you look at our subject, she has highlights and shadows, whereas our background is totally flat. So let's select that solid blue color and then add an exposure adjustment layer. And first of all, I'm going to make this one a bit darker. And then I'm going to select the gradient tool. You can find it under the paint bucket tool. From the gradient slider at the top, 
pick one of Photoshop's default black to white gradients, and then click and drag to add a graduation from dark to light. Now this may take a bit of trial and error, and remember the lighting on your background needs to match the lighting on your subject. If your subject is lit from the right and your light on the background is coming from the left, it's going to look pretty terrible. And you can also see I'm experimenting with a radial gradient here as well. And as you can see, it does make quite a difference. Ooh, just noticed a bit of dodgy masking there. Let's remove that nice and quick. Very nice, very nice. Anyway, next I'm going to add another exposure adjustment layer and do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to use this technique to add some highlights. So there we go, shadows and highlights done. Let's turn off these layers and turn them back on to see how they look. So there's the flat blue, and there they are with a few shadows and highlights added. And lastly, we're going to group everything together, make sure that everything is appropriately named, and that our entire file is nice and organized. There we go, well done, Dan. And there we go, so nine techniques that will enable you to professionally cut out hair in Photoshop. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, I've got a couple of other videos here I think you'll really enjoy. As always, you've been absolutely fantastic. Take care, and I'll see you next time.